Welcome to another exciting show of transformation. Prosper with Wayne, creating wealth, health, and happiness in your life. With your host, life and business coach, author, entrepreneur, and lover of life, Wayne Sutton. Prepare to become excited, expand your beliefs, and truly prosper in all the areas of your life. Enjoy. Hey guys, Wayne Sutton, thanks for jumping on board. I want you right now, right now, grab a pen, grab a pen. If you're not driving, if you're driving, pull over, grab a pen, and write this down. Go fulltimecoaching.com. Go fulltimecoaching.com. I want you to grab a hold of it. It's important. It's going to change your life. And I say that boldly. I say that very boldly because I know what's possible. I know what is possible. I know what we're doing every single day. So, a couple of things I want to talk about today. Number one, if you are one of our coaches and you're hearing this live as today, Wednesday, when we're releasing this, Wednesday, September 18th, be on our call tonight, the Wealthy Coach Session 4, the Wealthy Coach Session 4. We're going to take the, your Facebook and your social media presence we helped you create last week, and we're going to bullet, really just place it out there so you can actually start having clients find you. Is that what you want? Do you want to make more money? Come on. That's why you're here, Correct. So let's do it. Let's get in there. Let's start making the money that you deserve to make. Now, today I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about the failure code, why people fail. Obviously, on one webinar, we can't cover all of this, but I think it's really important to go into and explain why people fail, why they fail, and what we can do about it. Okay, so the system of failure. We want to break the process of failing in business and life. A couple things here. Number one, failure is not an accident. Failure is not accidental, just as success is a process that's duplicatable, so is failure. I want you to grab a hold of this. Just as success is a process, so is failure. And if we can recognize the process, then we can we can walk away from it. We can eliminate it. Make sense? All right. So let's jump in. Let's have some fun, guys. Again, grab a pen, grab a pen. Everything that has been created uses a structure. Failure has a structure and a sequence. Humans are creatures of pattern and habit. This goes to where our successes are achieved and the way we unknowingly construct our failures. I want you to hear this. There's times when you'll unknowingly construct a failure. And we want to walk away from this. I'm going to give an example. This is one of our coaching clients that I have permission to use their name. Her name is Cindy. Cindy's from San Antonio. Cindy is from San Antonio. And her words to me were very simple. Everything I touch seems to fail, Wayne. Now, immediately when I hear a word like everything or always or never, these absolutes, I immediately go in and I say immediately. I try to challenge that first. Because if they had this mindset, if everything I touch fails, then what I bring them will fail also. But if I can say everything, everything, and it's the tonality, everything, well, not everything, Wayne. But what I realized really quick from Cindy was that everything she did really was judged. She judged everything really quickly. Black, white, good, bad, yes, no, very binary, very, uh, very emotional. And she had initial automatic responses for everything. And this was just part of her upbringing, part of how she was raised, uh, part of this in, in, with her. It was literally her father that said, I need an answer now. There was no room for, and I'm not getting into deep psychology of it, but it really was, this is a question, have an answer now. Also, because she was, um, she spoke Spanish and she was in an English speaking school. She was trying to learn. There was this anxiety. If she waited too long, people made fun of her. So it was like, ooh, boom, 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 initial automatic response. So this initial automatic response determines, and we all have them. There's things I could say. There's words I could use. Abortion, war, uh, Democrat, Republican, money, anything that word, that word comes up, you have an initial automatic response. That determines your reaction. That immediate belief Bam! Right now, I believe this. That determines your reaction and thus your outcome in life. Okay? So, we're working with Cindy. This is really important because what happened was she was working 50 hour, 55 hours a week. Her degree in communication wasn't paying the money she needed. She thought she was going to go do movies and thought she was going to do all of these great things. And it just wasn't there. She was stuck at 39000 a year. 
and she was behind in bills. And she said, "Listen, I, and this isn't a coach. This is actually somebody that we're, I'm, I was coaching. I want you to understand that." She said, "Wayne, I've got bad credit. I've got behind in my bills. I've had to move in roommates. I don't have my own place, and I'm kind of embarrassed at this age of my life. What do I do? What do I do?" But she again back to this binary lens: yes, no, good, bad, love, hate. Her frame caused her to see pain in most cases instead of the ability to see opportunity. Okay, because it was just like this is not good, or this is this is good, and there was no gray area. And sometimes in that gray area, there's lessons. But we'll talk about this. So there's no failure. And you, and those who've gone through our coaching program, we talk about the difference in failure and feedback. A lot of coaches have talked about that. There's no failure, only feedback. That may not always be true. There is a time when things fail. We get that. If you're driving down the road and the motor blows up in your Mercedes, guess what? It failed. It's not feedback. Feedback could be, hey, I need a new car. But it failed. But in life, we really don't want to just label something as failure. We want to see, is there a place where's feedback? What lesson can I learn? What skills or resources do I need? And ultimately, ultimately, what if you were just curious to look? What if you were curious to look beyond this circumstance and see what's next? Hindsight is twenty twenty. So what if you think about it? Even as you're listening to this podcast, I want you to think, what have you learned in the past? What reality that you may have been just devastating when you first discovered it, you were made aware of it, but as you look back, you realize, oh, wow, that really did set things up for a positive experience. Oh, wow, I really kind of, maybe I over-exaggerated on that emotionally. It was the same from Cindy. So what we did was take her 39000 a year and said, okay, let's look at what options. What do you need? She didn't mind working the, the you know, 55 hours a week, but she wanted the money to back it up. So we set up a process of learning the necessary skills and the proper steps for her to move up in the corporate ladder or move into a different position, should I say. It wasn't really up in the ladder, but it was kind of just a different position. I said, are there other positions that will pay you what you need to earn and this same company, or do we need to look at another company? She said, well, there's, there's positions, but I don't know that I qualify. So we worked with her, asked the right questions, got her with this skill set, and realized, well, <laughs> she had the skill set about 90%. There was just 10% she didn't have, but it was actually something that they would train her. So we moved her in 21 days into a new position. It doubled. I want you to hear that doubled her income instantly. Doubled it. And with those skills and strategies, shortly thereafter, about a year after that, she moved over to another company, the competition, because there she had the high six-figure opportunity. See, the struggle of failing is key sometimes. The struggle itself. What she saw as failure. I'm at 39000 I'm having to move in roommates. I can't afford to get out on my own. Things are hurting me financially. What she saw as failure, literally, literally, was just a matter of feedback, a place for her to learn. So what does she need? She needed some education, some coaching, and ultimately a new company. But what about you? What about your clients? Is it education, coaching, new company, new relationship, new mindset? See, nothing just fails or succeeds. I want you to grab a hold of this. We learn skills, we acquire knowledge, we build beliefs. I went, I received my degree, or my, I'm, some, I'm sorry, my ordination as a minister, but I realized there was the feedback was I didn't have some of the answers for some of the problems that people were coming to me for. So I, st- I enrolled in a number of different classes. I ended up getting my degree, my temperament therapy degree in counseling and and I got my master's degree and I just kept learning and learning and learning. And I said, hey, I really want to do more coaching and counseling. So I jumped in a number of different coaching certification programs and, and studies and I realized a lot of them were lacking the structure and the blueprint that we have here. That's why I tell people, get certified with us, come on board. But what I did was instead of saying, oh, wow, I failed with this client or I failed with this program, or why did I invest all of this? What it was for me was learning skills, acquiring knowledge, and building beliefs. And that's my operating system. You literally, everything you do, you act or react because of past failures or past successes. Your mind says, hey, your mind looks for patterns. If I did this before and it hurt, I touched the hot stove, my hand was burned. I did things in the past that were bad, I don't want to do it again. I did things that were good, I do want to do it again. And that's how we really determine our life. So once you know the mind virus is active, what do I mean by that? The mind virus. That means literally things that are not good, things that are holding you back, limited beliefs, limited uh, 
um, things that you've accepted, then you can remove it, but not until you're aware of it. So I'm going to give you three. So again, I hope you grabbed a pen. Again, if not, pull over, grab a pen. See, these are three common failure patterns. Much more than I wanted to teach on a podcast, but we're going to go for it, okay? Number one, be little in your achievements. When you achieve something, be little in those achievements. Come on. Number two, moving the goalpost. What does it mean to move the goalpost? And number three, denial. Number three, denial. Okay? Okay. I want you to grab a hold of this. Not admitting your goals. When I say denial, it's not admitting your goals. So, be little in your achievements. Oh, it was nothing. Oh, I couldn't do it without my team. Well, you know, I did achieve this, but only after 10 years. I mean, that long in business, you're bound to get some traction. So if you say these things, does any of these ring a bell? Oh, it was nothing. Oh, it wasn't me. It was my team. If you say these or just think these, you not only wipe out the compliment, but also much of what the compliment can do for you. Notice where you are complimented because sometimes that compliment is a character trait and that character trait needs to be amplified, not ignored. Okay, those who went through the certification program, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, number two, moving the goalpost. You receive one level of accomplishment, but you constantly look ahead for the next goal. You sold two homes as a realtor, but you're unhappy because somebody else sold 10. You enrolled four people last week into your coaching program, but you're unhappy because somebody else enrolled 20. You made $3,000 a month uh, part-time, but you, you keep hearing that people make 30000 a month in coaching. You move the goalpost too quickly. There's nothing wrong with moving the goalpost, but there is something about moving it too quickly, and we'll get into that. Now, denial. Not admitting your goals. Things are just fine as they are. I'm okay where I'm at. I don't need more. Usually this is a self-limiting belief that's said verbally or even unspoken, but what happens is as you say that, things are fine just as they are. They begin to form a reality in your mind. They begin to concrete inside of your mind, and it's impossible to go beyond what you believe. Okay? So what do you do? Number one, first, receive recognition for your achievements. I'll say this. If you come on board in our program and become certified, I award you for that. I really congratulate you for that. You've taken the money, the time, the investment. So you need to receive recognition for what you do in life. In public, study in private, what patterns, beliefs, and habits have helped you create the moment that is being rewarded? Think about it. If you're being reward, rewarded for something, then say thank you. Just Sometimes just saying thank you. And don't try to add to it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then notice what am I being rewarded for. Take those actions and the beliefs that led to that action and make it part of your daily life. Take time. Find, next, take time to celebrate your achievement. Moving forward is not a bad idea. But if you do not move, not learn to love and appreciate the accomplishment. Otherwise, you're training in your own mind that nothing's ever good enough. In the world of sales, a lot of times people say, hey, great, you sold, you had 85,000 in sales last month. You had 850,000 in sales. Whatever it was, great. Now, you do, it used to be almost like a, a joke, but it really concreted in some bad beliefs. It was like, okay, we well, you know it's day, day one of a new month. You start back at zero. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> it really is this. Do not, you can't celebrate. Now, I do believe you shouldn't only hold on to your past. It is what you're doing now. But you do need to celebrate. Take time to celebrate because there's a reason to celebrate. Not just so you feel good, but also because it trains your inner mind. People move towards pleasure. If you take time and honor that, truly experience that, and celebrate it, not rush through it but celebrate it. You're anchoring that positive emotion, that celebration to the activities that got you there. And guess what? The mind will want that again. It'll want that dopamine rush. It'll want that accomplishment again. And it will unconsciously lead you there. People move towards pleasure and that includes you. And finally, are you in denial? Never ever apologize for your desires. Never say, I don't need that. This is good enough. If you really want something. Never apologize for your desires if they're truly healthy and ethical. So I choose to have blank in my life. Maybe you choose to have a wife. You choose to have a husband. You choose to have uh, a better job. You choose to become a better coach. 
I choose to earn and how much money? We're at the end of 2019 or almost at the end of 2019. So what are we going to talk about in 2020? What are we going to earn? I choose to earn, is it 50,000, 100,000? No, I want to learn, earn. Want means need. I choose. I choose to earn. Is it 50,000, 100,000, 200,000? What do you choose to earn in 2020? And finally, I choose X without real, without apology. What is that? I choose blank. I choose X without apology. And sometimes you'll say that and you won't believe it. You want to believe it. You have to say it over and over. See, denial is usually an area of self-protection. I can't get hurt if I don't fall in love. I can't get demoted if I never get promoted. So how do we solve this? How do you solve it for your clients? Find one area. One, not 20, not five, not three, not two. One area. They, they can admit that they haven't admitted before. Use the resources and resourcefulness and find accomplishment. Get it done. One area and then another. You're reframing your reality. So let me give you a couple of statements in the reframe that you want to use. I didn't do well enough. Let's reframe that to I did the best I could do. And now could probably do better because we've learned from the experience. Here's one. I failed. I failed and lost the sale for those in selling. How about reframing to that into they saw the value from another salesperson. And there are things I can learn from to improve. Here's one. I couldn't do it. Whatever that is. I couldn't make the sale. I couldn't get the exercise program. I couldn't lose the weight. Whatever. I couldn't do it. Even if you truly tried, but you couldn't do it. The reframe is, I didn't have enough skill or knowledge or the right mindset. But I'm so lucky that I can learn and improve. See, we're not denying the reality. We're denying the existence of that reality forming a reality in us. So what do you have to do? You've got to notice and capture your personal inner talk. And when you capture it, write it down. Now, how can you reframe the belief around your inner talk that is positive and success-focused? How can you reframe it that, so that it is positive and self-focused? I want you to ask yourself that. How can you reframe it so that it is positive and self-focused. Okay, success focused. I'm sorry, not self. <laughs> well, actually, it should be self. This is the daily activity, guys. You're not going to do it once. You're going to do it over and over. You're going to do it over and over. Notice and capture. Here's what you do. You need to notice and capture your personal inner talk. Notice and capture your personal inner talk. So, note three, if I said one thing that you couldn't do if somebody doesn't have an accomplishment, but as homework, if you're listening to this and you're one of our coaches or you're not one of our coaches, I still want you to do the homework. Three inner or external dialogues, things you say to yourself or things you say out loud that are failure-based instead of feedback-based. And then write out three reframes, three verbal reframes that you will actively make part of your life. I can't afford it. It needs to be changed to how can I afford that? I don't know what to do. It needs to be refrained. Where will I discover the skill set or mindset to make this a reality? So note three inner external dialogues that are failure-based instead of feedback-based and reframe them. Guys, I want to bring you so much more. If you are not one of our coaches, maybe you're a coach with another organization, but you want a blueprint to change lives, to transform people. You want a certification that has substance to it, then I want you to jump on board, go over to lifecoachlifestyle.com, put in your email address, and grab a hold of the book. Follow the process. Go through. Also, Maybe you are a coach, but you're stuck. You're a part-time coach, and you're not full-time yet. Then go over to gofulltimecoaching.com. That is gofulltimecoaching.com or prosperwithwayne.com. It's going to take you to the same website. And I want you to look at our webinar. I want you to download our book. I want you to get in touch with us. Let's get you moving from where you're at to where you want to be. If you're not at $10,000 a month or more, we need to talk. This is Wayne Sutton. Make it a great day, and I look forward to hearing from you. God bless. Thanks for joining us again at Prosper with Wayne. Be sure to subscribe to us for more exciting, life-changing episodes. Go today, in fact. Go now to prosperwithwayne.com and enter your email for our exclusive newsletter and other resources. God bless and go prosper.